So welcome back to the channel and boy do we have a very special episode for you. If you're in the market for a portable power station or some sort of off-grid power, you may want to watch this episode. It's going to go over many days and we're going to get you a lot of information out. So we're not going to just go over all the specs and bore you with that. You want to see this thing in use. So let's dive right into it. I've got to do some building today. We're going to run some of the most powerful tools that I have and we're building and setting up to move this inside and actually run our home. We'll test some appliances. We now have shallow water well pumps out here. A lot of y'all have those. Let's see if it'll run one of those. And then we'll go over the finer details of the Blue Eddy AC 200 Max. This is one sweet unit. All right, so today we're gonna to be testing the AC 200 Max from Blue Eddy. This is kind of their mid-size unit at 2200 watts. I really like the way this new unit looks and performs. So it's got an LCD touchscreen. I do wish that was a little brighter for outdoor use, but it's adequate for indoors. We'll go over some of the positive and negatives here at the end of the video, but it is quite responsive. It is nice using the touchscreen. They also have a phone app that works well. So on the right hand side, I'm happy to see a TT30P, a travel trailer plug on a unit this size. That's a very powerful plug and how you get your full 2200 watts. Over here on the left hand side, that is a 30 amp 12 volt output. So all my RV people, van people, travel trailer people, that's an important plug. We'll discuss it a little more. You got 10 amp 12 volts, a cigarette lighter, and two 5 amp barrel plugs right here. You've got a 100 watt fast charge USB-C, two fast charge USBs, and your standard USBs right there. Plenty of way to charge all your different devices. And up there on the top right is your 20 amp four household type plugs. So moving on right here, it also has two wireless charging pads up top for your phones. This is on the side of the unit. You can add two additional batteries. I'm so happy to see that on units in this power range. So we can expand that. We're gonna talk about that more a little later as well. And on the bottom left down there, you see the DC input plug. You've got different adapters there. So you can charge from solar up to 145 volts, 15 amps. You can also charge from a vehicle. And on the bottom right, that's where you can plug in a wall charging adapter, 500 watt one that is included. So a quick look around the unit, nice and sleek. And here is the Blue Eddy B230 battery. We're going to talk about this. Again, this unit is expandable. And there is some amazing features about this battery that I'm really, really happy to see. You're not just purchasing just an extra battery. You can use it as a standalone. Look at all the different power options right there on the side of it. So here we are running some tests. I just fired up my table saw right here. That's a 15 amp table saw. And you see that we're running a little over 700 watts on the screen right there. I just started running wood through it. We're creeping up over a thousand watts. So I thought y'all might want some of that information. This unit can easily run a 15 amp table saw. My planer, probably the most powerful you know, tool that I have minus a welder. Uh, in the 120 volt range. You can see we're at 1200 watts. As soon as the wood starts feeding through, we're good 1400, climbing up to 1500 watts. So that's a heck of a pull and a very heavy duty 120 volt appliance. Now we're over 1600 watts right there as this thing is feeding wood through. So this probably has the most surge of any tool that I own. This is a 15 amp miter saw right there. You can see when I start up, we just about peg 1600 watts and this unit handled the surge no problems. There I am firing it up again as well. So here's another screen. You can see the voltage does drop whenever I'm firing up that miter saw from 120 all the way down to around 109 volts. I'm firing it up a few times here to show you that. That's acceptable. I don't want to see any lower than that, but it is handling. You can tell that the miter saw is running a little less powerful. All right, my friends, this is a special project that I just got done working on. This is an off-grid well that I put in. We have a hand pump right here. And what we're curious about today, I installed a one horsepower shallow well jet pump. If you haven't watched this episode, you may want to check it out. I drilled all of this stuff by hand. No heavy equipment required to put this in. So one thing that blows my mind, I see people test portable power stations all the time. They'll talk about them for well, off-grid use, emergency use, power outage. I hardly ever see anybody test well pumps. That's another reason I wanted a well pump out here. One, backup well source and water source for us. And two, to test some of these power stations that we get in and do reviews on. If you're fortunate enough to live in an area that has shallow water like most of the Southeast does around here for us, you may have a shallow well jet pump. You'll usually see them anywhere from three quarter of horsepower 
to around one and a half horsepower. But one horsepower is kind of a good middle of the road size pump. So I have removed my solar panels to protect them. Springtime's when we get nasty storms that sometimes has hail. And because this is a backup water source, we don't need it right away. But typically I have solar panels on this roof and I have wire made up to come down and actually power units like this up if we need to run water for extended period of time, say for irrigation or filling up a large IBC tote, things such as that. So let's power this unit on, turn the AC on, and let's see, will it fire up and run a one horsepower well pump? All right, the pump is on, but it is under pressure. So I'm gonna run some water and just listen. Should be kicking on any second now. Started it up, no problem. Let's see how much power we're pulling. 908 watts but it's the initial surge that well pumps have that typically trip out most units i don't know if you can see that it's mighty bright out here 888 watts right now output that's awesome so we can very very easily run a one horsepower well pump as long as it's 120 volts all right, so it's a beautiful sunny day here in Florida and I thought this would be a good time to do some solar power testing here. Behind me is a home-built solar array. We have 1200 watts, so 12 100 watt panels here. I have six of them wired in series and then ultimately these other six are wired in series as well and they're paralleled together. So we're doing that to control how much voltage and how much amperage we're sending to our units. Now with portable power stations, the big difference between them and the nice big on the wall inverters is you have to be very careful on how much voltage and amperage you send. A lot of people just get it in their head, hey, we can send X number of watts. That's just not the case. You're gonna wanna monitor the voltage and amperage. And that'll make for sure that the unit itself doesn't cut off or have any potential damage, which I have noticed a lot of these units are so smart. If you send too much in, they just tend to cut themselves off. So let's go inside and test how much solar power we can put in right here. We're gonna be right at the limit of what this will take, at least voltage wise out of my system. And let's also test the end wall power charging. All right, so excuse my messy shop. Actually, by the time you're watching this, there is a very special area being built right here just for testing devices like this. But it just so happens this is where my solar power cables come in and I do all my tie-ins to say a manual transfer switch. So the first thing I wanna test, let's see what the open circuit voltage is coming in from the panels outside and let's make for sure that we're in the proper range. We're currently showing 134.8 volts. Now that's open circuit, we're not connected to anything. This unit claims it can handle up to 145 volts. All right, so Blue Eddy provides a cable that plugs right into the side to their DC input, as well as an MC4 connector cable. Let's go ahead and power the unit on, plug this in and make sure everything kicks on correctly. Again, 134 volts, this is ready to take up to 145. All right, we're plugged in. Let's see what kind of power we're bringing in. And we're gonna test the in the wall charger. All right, so first and foremost, now with the solar and the AC adap power adapter both plugged in and running, I wanna say it's still probably the most quiet unit I've ever tested. A fan noise is a concern of yours. Well, this thing is quiet. I'm only hearing the fan off of this right here. Still don't even hear the fan running on the solar charge controller in here. So take a look at this. Blue Eddy claims 900 watts maximum solar input. You can see we're maxing it out at 917, 918. And it says 500 watts input from the wall. We're getting close, 487. But if you add those two together, well, we're at the full 1400 watt maximum capability of this unit. So it's 2,048 watt hours. With this much power coming in, I mean, you're talking charging this thing in a little over an hour, hour and a half, and you're ready to go at these rates. So even though my units are 1,200 watts out there, I'm technically over paneled, my voltage is good, my amperage is good, and the charge controller is just saying, hey, I'm not taking more than 900 watts in. At this rate, we'll have this thing charged up in no time. All right, for those of you that are curious about 12 volt refrigerators and coolers, I have a very large 12 volt operated one here. I've been running it for quite a while. This side's already down the temp, the refrigerator side. I'm heading toward 10 degrees on the freezer side. You can see we're pulling 13 volts. And there's the cable running out of the unit. 
to the front of the Blue Eddy and we're only using 35 watts. Now that does have a variable speed compressor. You'll see it a little higher and a little lower, but my goodness, with the capacity this unit has, you can run that refrigerator for a very, very long time. All right, so now for the real test. When I start thinking of units in this price range, this power range with expandable capacities, chances are you're purchasing one to either power an RV, a weekend kind of camping trip, big tailgating party, or you're looking for home power backup. That's what I'm passionate about. That's what I think about. We're in a hurricane state, we're in Florida. I have lived through enough power outages that I never wanna live through another one again. And when you start talking about units this size, well, you can potentially power a lot of your home with this, at least critical things like freezers and refrigerators, running fans, CPAP machines, medical equipment, things such as that. So I recently just installed a generator and plug inside my house just for testing these units and for us to be able to put power stations in here whenever we have hurricanes and other things coming and we don't have to go outside, start a generator, go in the rain, nothing, we lose power, we flip a couple breakers and we can power up critical components and loads in our house. So I'll put all these adapters down in the description, but I've purchased some adapters off of Amazon. This right here is going to allow me to use that TT30P RV adapter right here, which gets me the true full 2400 watts that this unit is capable of. That's a lot of power. That'll power up many freezers, refrigerators, everything else in your house. You'll just have to watch certain loads like very powerful microwaves. I probably wouldn't run dishwashers with heating elements and things like that, but during a power outage, other than yes, a microwave, you're probably gonna run some food. You're not gonna run major heavy loads. This unit should be able to handle it. So let me adapt this in really quick. Plug it right in to this RV port. This is why I love seeing these units, these more powerful units coming with that port so we can get full power out. It's not just for RVs. It's so we can do heavy loads like, well, a home. All right, I should also mention this particular plug that I have right here will actually jump over both phases. So it powers up both sides of my electrical box over there because this is a four wire connector set up for 240 volts. So we're gonna send 120 volts down either side of this connector on both sides of my panel, but you have to understand because this is only a 120 volt unit, it's not supplying 240 volts. We're just putting 120 on either side of that breaker panel, but it's off the same phase. So what all that means is throw off all your 240 volt breakers. You cannot run 240 volt appliances off of this. It just does not supply that. And then this will allow you to power up and run your 120 volt appliances all throughout your house. I have videos explaining that in more detail, showing you the inside wiring of the panel if you want to watch all that and put your mind at ease a little more. All right, so let's power the unit on. I'm going to turn the AC power on. We're now supplying power over to my generator box, and we need to flip a couple breakers. So if we come over into my panel, first and foremost, all 240 volt breakers. Let's get them off. And then I'll throw off the main grid power. So check this out. We are now powering our house with this. You also need to pay attention to what breakers you're throwing on. Y'all could have some very powerful 120 volt breakers that you may not want to throw on in your house. So let's get all these thrown on and we'll test a few things throughout the house. All right, so freezers and refrigerators are back on. Let's take a look at our unit right now with things starting up, lights, a few other things running in the house. 358 watts, so we could run a very long time. And that's me just running everything. I can go power off a lot of stuff and make it through the night, say if we had a power outage. So keep in mind that's lights running in here, fans back on and running, you got parasitic draw from TVs. You can see we have the stove and microwave powered up. Refrigerator's also on. Got little greenhouses growing, security system powered up, an outside mini fridge. This unit also shows your voltage. We're staying right at 120, that's great. 60 hertz, that's extremely important. And what is so nice about these units, all clean power, so it's safe for medical equipment and computers. Speaking of that, I have my computer and Wi-Fi routers, everything else plugged in upstairs. None of that stuff has been disconnected. And we're leveled out at 340 watts. All right, so let's see if we can power this on. This thing pulls a lot of power, it's huge. Yes, it will. All right, so this is the first time I've heard the fan kick on this, but look, we're pulling 1,873 watts. That's a tremendous amount of power. But now you can hear the fan running. 
All right, so I just did a quick test to show you the powers of these types of units. Now we need to step back out to the shop and let's talk about the battery and the expandability of this because think about this particular scenario right here. So the allure of these types of units to me is they're plug and play as they can get. Look, one cable, connect solar up, you're done. There's no charge controllers to wire up. There's no inverters, nothing. Yes, that does come at a cost to have a compact package with all that built in. I hear people all the time saying, well, you can get a generator cheaper. You're exactly right, you can. Not everybody desires generators for lots of different reasons. Or some people say, hey, you can put the big on-the-wall systems and rack systems that are more powerful and maybe even less money. That's also exactly right, but then you're hiring an electrician if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, and you have to have room dedicated for that. Different strokes for different folks, as I say. Not one system fits everybody correctly. I personally don't care what you get, as long as you have some sort of backup. In today's world, we just have too many things constantly taking our grid down. I want to protect stuff like my food. I want to be able to charge my phones. I want lights. I want a fan. Some of y'all want to run medical equipment. And a lot of people desire something small and portable like this that they can stick in the garage or closet and bring out and literally power a house within reason. You can't power everything with this. So this is why we test things on the channel because your needs and wants are completely different than mine. That's why we test a variety of stuff. Okay, so now it's time we talk about the expandability of this. This is the one thing I really like about the AC200 Max. I've tested 2000 watt range portable power stations in the past that weren't much cheaper than this particular unit, did not offer a 30 amp RV plug, did not offer expandability. That is huge now. Again, we're getting in enough power range here, especially for RVers or people doing home backup or maybe a small off-grid structure, they're gonna want extra batteries. So I think the battery option is brilliant, especially the way they've set them up. And the cool thing I like about what they've done here is you can get the B230 battery, which is this one right here, and add an extra 2,000 watt hours capacity. By the way, you can add a second one to the unit and get up to 6,000 watt hours. They also have a B300 battery, 3000 watt hour capacity. You can add those instead. So they give you two options on adding external batteries and they've done something very smart as well. You can actually charge these batteries separate from the unit. So if you're having big multiple stack batteries like that, the last thing you want is to try to charge it on just 900 watts like I showed you, which is plenty for charging the AC200 Max. But if you have two extra huge batteries, they've given you the option to charge them independently and they've made some very smart improvements. So I'm actually really excited about this battery. What they've done here is they've given you not just an external battery, which you hook up here to the main unit, but you can use the battery as a standalone power supply. That is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So you get a 100 watt USB-C charger, an 18 watt fast USB charger, and check this out, a 10 amp 12 volt cigarette lighter. Why is that important? A lot of people may wanna use this to say, go power up a 12 volt car refrigerator. Well, you've seen that test, it'll do it. I think that's an awesome idea right there. So if you purchase this as a backup for your AC200, well, you can go use this. Now you've actually got an extra reason to justify purchasing, well, what is a relatively expensive battery? You can use it on its own independently. Brilliant idea. All right, so how does this work? Just pick your unit up, put it on top. And as you can see, we can actually add a second battery underneath. Now we've got a nice compact stackable design. And if you look right here on the side of the unit, this is where you can add up to two additional batteries. So if we wanna add a battery, just pop that open, plug this right in, let's lock it so it can't come back out and do the same thing on this battery bank down here. So now if we come up to our main unit and hit the battery, look, it already recognizes the second battery, which is fully charged. And I have verified while this unit charges, it does charge the secondary battery. I believe when these first come out, they didn't offer that option. I'm very happy to see that has been improved upon. Now one gripe I can say that I have, I do not like how this cable sticks out. This is kind of all intrusive and in the way. I can think of like people putting this in small compartments in RVs or campers to where this isn't gonna work out. Man, if they could design a flat plug to go in, a cable to go down here, or some way when you slide this one down, it locks into this one. Oh man, that would be awesome. 
a minor nitpick and gripe, but something I would love to see improved is this cable management. So this is one thing I really do like and prefer about portable power stations over some, well, generators or on the wall systems. One, it's portable, I can go use it anywhere. Two, you can build this out as you want to. Add a second battery when funds allow, add a third battery whenever you can afford it, or maybe you don't need to build a system out that big. Just the AC200 Max by itself may be all that you need. Now, if you're like me and you love using these for home backup power, well, additional batteries make sense. All right, to wrap this all up, Blue Eddy, I think you've got a winner here. I mean, a few minor gripes. Let's talk about a couple of things I don't like. Cable management, we just discussed. LCD screen, if we could get that a little brighter to see out in the sunlight is something I would love to see improved. Internal charging, so I don't have to carry the brick around. Would love to see that in a future model. Maybe a little bit stronger. Of course, 500 watts is plenty for just this unit. 500 watts is starting to lack whenever you have multiple batteries connected, but you can can purchase an additional charger and charge the battery. So that kind of nullifies that. So one other feature that's lacking that I would love to see on this unit is a UPS or uninterrupted power supply. So long story short, say if you were to leave this at a vacation home or off-grid cabin, have your security equipment hooked up to this, internet, things such as that so you can monitor your place. You could essentially leave this plugged into the wall to charge and should you lose grid power, it would instantly swap over and power up whatever's plugged into the front and then run off of battery power only. That's a feature we're starting to see a lot more that I would love to see on it. Probably not a deal breaker for some, some do desire that. Now let's talk about the good. Very portable, love how compact it is. I like the responsive touch screen. The power ports are adequate. So one other feature I really like, pay attention my RV friends or people with off-road vans going off-roading and you put one of these in to power your unit. 30 amp provided, 12 volts. That's big in the industry nowadays. So if you were to have a 12 volt distribution center that you've built into your van or RV and you're powering up a bunch of 12 volt appliances, lights, refrigerators, things such as that, having the ability to output 30 amps can really get you going. The 30 amp RV plug, I think is a must to see on units this size nowadays. That's a nice addition. Not only is it good for people in the RV community, but that gives us a very powerful aftermarket plug that we can power homes with and other things that'll get us above the rated 20 amps on your typical household outlet. Overall, I love the look, the feel, the design. This looks better than some older Blue Eddy units that I've tested. I love how quiet this unit is. That was a shocker for me. Obviously the battery add-on and adaptability, game changer for units this size. Now this really opens up the possibilities of what you can use these for. Now FYI, I did not get paid to make this review. I did not get asked to leave a positive review. I've told you about some of the positives and about some of the negatives of it. That's what we do on this channel. We test things, we're gonna be open and honest. But I did ask Blue Eddy if they would send me an extra battery. I wanted to do a long-term test of this. That's something I'm not seeing a lot of other channels doing. They'll sit here and give you one video, go over a bunch of specs, and you don't really know about the long-term reliability and performance of the unit. So be looking for a second video that's coming that's gonna focus more on the expendability of this unit, testing the true watt hour capacity and seeing what we can really run. I'm looking forward to seeing how much this lowers my energy bill in the shop and what all it'll truly power, how long it'll run, and that'll give us time to experience cloudy days, weather conditions, and other things that we did not experience during this test right here. Hopefully you enjoyed the review, spent many days testing this thus far with a few minor gripes here. I think it's a winner. I think it's probably gonna be one of Blue Eddie's most popular designs they've ever made. Catch you on the next video.